Uh, here we go, landscapes. Um, that's the first part we're going to do is stream drainage patterns. So um, let's say this is a cross section of the land. You see, you see sort of elongated hills here with the valleys in between. And in this case, you have this unique sort of dome structure. The, 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 the rock layers jut out of the ground in these sort of rings. Uh, here we have a volcano, typical volcano shape. And with stream drainage patterns, it means if you were overhead, like what would the shape of the streams and rivers in this area, what would they look like? Because they're going to be caused by the shape of the land because water flows downhill. So that's what I mean by stream, stream drainage patterns. Here are some choices here. There's these four. And we don't really need to worry about the names. The names are not something that comes up. Don't want to clog your head with the names. It's really about matching them up with the landscape that exists. What would the stream drainage pattern be? Like this. So for instance, this, uh, this landscape here might have a stream drainage pattern that looks like this, okay? And these sections here are the water sort of flowing off of here, okay, uh, in, in either direction. So uh, they, these kind of match up here with this dome structure, and it sort of causes these round ring-like uh, rock layers with lower areas in between, it would look like this. So if you look at a close, you say, okay, I see the circular sort of pattern here. I get it. And then the typical volcano, the water's going to flow outward from the high point at the middle. It would look kind of like this. The arrows on there really help. So this is the peak of the volcano. So those, usually pretty straightforward once someone uh, has seen them. Landscape types. Okay, the three main landscape types are mountains, plateaus, and lowlands. Uh, mountains, so the, it's really mountains and plateaus. Understanding how, how, how they differ is really the most important part. So mountains are high elevation, but they have distorted and deformed rock layers such as folding. In this case, we have folding here. So this would be mountains here, mountains here. The rocks, you know, uh, get folded, pushed together, thrust up. That is what we call mountains, which is different than a plateau. So look at the rock layers here. A plateau is up next. It is high elevation, but the layers are really flat. So you can see them here, the layers are really flat. And, you know, this valley is called by erosion of, of, of a river. And lowlands are just basically lowlands. A lot of erosion probably occurred there, and they're just lowlands. So I don't have a diagram for that. The main factors that determine the landscape of an area is really the bedrock structure and weathering, or how weathering affects, has affected this bedrock structure over so many years. So in this case, the folding and differential weathering, see these along with these hills that kind of go in this uh, with the valleys in between, these long straight hills. Well, they're because this folding here, and what I highlighted in purple, those rock layers are more resistant to weathering. They didn't weather as much. These rock layers here, this is shale here in between, they weathered more, so there's not as much of that rock has been carried away, and that's how we get that shape. So that's what I call differential weathering. These rock layers, the purple and then the white ones, they weather at different rates because some's more resistant than others, and you end up with something like that. Um, as I'm pointing out there, more resistant. So in this case, here's a cross section here. And like, why does A jut out of the ground so much? And why does B kind of like this? That's because A is going to be more resistant than, or the most resistant of these layers we see here. And B has been less resistant because, you know, there was these rock layers may have been hundreds of feet more and they've all been er eroded many years. Just this eroded more, this eroded less because it's more resistant. People get confused with the more resistant has eroded less. Uh, less resistant has eroded more. Think about that for a second. So just to show them all together, this is another diagram showing mountains. Here's how just sort of you see the mountain shape, distorted rock layers here. Plateau, kind of higher elevation. You see some erosion, but flat rock layers. And lowlands, they're just lower um, and really generally pretty flat. So that's one of the good the key differences between them. Um, and in this case, so a dry climate, here, here, here you have a plateau and a dry climate uh, will kind of look like this. Notice how kind of sort of angular and sharp these layers are. But if it's more of a moist climate or wetter climate, uh, all that uh, rain and the vegetation will cause it to be a little more rounded. Another part to um, landscapes that you kind of need to know. Here we go. Here's a question like this. A change in climate to one that is more humid would cause, so in this case, look what we see here, it became more humid, what would happen? The shape of the hills would become more rounded. Which characteristics identify mountain landscape regions? Answer, steep slopes with deformed bedrock. So it's all the stuff we, that we just mentioned. Here's another one. Which two geologic processes most likely created this landscape region? So you look at it and go, hmm, okay, 
Well, uh, what would be the answer? It would be this. Folding, you see the rock layers are folded here, uh, followed by erosion. That's key. New York State landscape regions. This is uh, in the reference table. So it's page, it's really page two on the reference table. If you have a reference table like this, page two and three, they often go together and have to use them together, as we'll see. So here we go. So this is the chart on page two. Now it's drawn like this. I'm going to put some colors in. And then, this, sorry, this is page three. This is another map of New York State. And again, they're right next to each other. But let's go back to this one. Uh, I'm going to go use on this map, and then I'm going to sort of put over, I'm going to overlap it or overlay it with the, uh, some of the, of the regions of New York State. So Adirondack Mountains are here in blue. Tuck Hill Plateau is here. Allegheny Plateau. The Catskills, also a plateau here. Um, the Taconic Mountains. It gets a little complicated down here. Sorry, Long Island. I had to cut you off. Sorry. Um, and these are all lowlands here, lowlands, and, you know, there's lowlands out here, so I didn't color those in, but it gives you a sense of one laid over the other, which is kind of nice. So here's a question. Now, check this out. Which two New York State landscape regions have surface bedrock that formed about 1,000 million years ago? You may know it as a billion years ago, but they have it as 1,000 million, 1,000 million years ago. They're the same thing. So watch what it takes to answer this. Hold on to your hat. Check it out. Uh, so, first, we have to go here, okay? We're going to zoom in to the, that thousand million years ago time period, okay? Here's, and this, here's the thousand, Proterozoic era, okay? So, uh, and I'm saying that because this, page three of the reference table, this shows you the type of uh, bedrock uh, down here, the, sort of, the, this not so much, no, sorry, it doesn't show you the type of bedrock as much as the time frame of when they formed. So we're looking down here. These are your, so that thousand million um, time frame, that's the Proterozoic. Those are down here, and it gives you the rock symbols. I know you can't see them, but I'm going to sort of uh, fill them in right now. Oh, you can see them right now. Uh, middle Proterozoic, these are your rock, the patterns here. And you got to look on the reference table. Sometimes they're hard to find. They are hard to find because the pattern's kind of weird. It would be great if it was in color, but it's not. We don't have color reference tables yet, but hopefully someday. Um, and basically, you'll find these two areas. This, this kind of jumps out of you. This is really hard to find. It's really obscure down here. So this is one of the harder questions. So uh, with that, you then have them here, and you have to refer to this part of the... So you got to go to the other page of the reference table. Is the Adirondack Mountains and the Hudson Highlands down here. Therefore, your answer is Hudson Highlands and Adirondack Mountains. Whew. You have to work for that one. That's definitely one of the harder questions. That is a hard question because you have to know do all of those things. So, but um, if you can do that, then you can do an easier question on it. So.